Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Hard times call for hard conversations. Welcome to The Advocate, where we tell it as it is, although not necessarily from the same perspective. To start us off, I'll be wasting no time in taking on the not so positive development of the noun, well, the army has denied it, Operation Positive ID. Victoria, a fresh yet seasoned advocate, will tackle the lack of affordable housing for the majority of Nigerians. I can suggest that a hardline approach is needed to inject some sober reality to our increasing culture of fake news. Well, there's nothing fake about Obi's advocacy, although a new kid on the block. She tackles the aged problem of inclusion in education. Meanwhile, Saidu will have us believe that our president's re recent return from a trip to Russia should be greeted with chants of, uh, I dare say it, daddy or yo-yo. Well, all this kicks off when we return after this break. So pardon me if this sounds like an oxymoron, but I'm compelled to ask, are we, what kind of democracy are we in? And I say this in light of the recent, um, well, now denied Operation Positive ID. I wonder if we're really in a democracy, if the story of the Nigerian army, which is constitutionally taxed with protecting the sovereignty of Nigeria against external ag aggression, we hear now, the, even though they've denied it strenuously, I might add, that it intended to commence operation, something called Operation Positive Identification across the country. The planned operation, which was supposed to commence November 2nd and end somewhere around the 23rd of December, will have seen soldiers nationwide mounting roadblocks and with sporadic checks to demand identity cards from citizens across the country. According to a report in by Premium Times, the positive identification operation will have seen soldiers probably accosting citizens on the street and highways and asking them to produce means of identification on the spot. So my question is, what kind of democracy is this if this were, would have been allowed to happen? And I know now that the army has strenuously denied it, as I said at the very beginning of this advocacy. But we need to ask ourselves this question, because this is very important. To hear that the army, the national army, our federal army, will be on the streets calls for grave concern. And I'm very happy that they've denied this, and I would like to see see, and indeed most Nigerians would like to see that this, is, this would not be the case at all. Um, we know that we face serious security challenges across the country. We have um, issues of kidnappings. We have the issues of banditry across the country. We have Boko Haram as well, and all kinds of problems. And I think the army should be tasked with focusing on external aggressions, especially within the Northeast. And where there's a breakdown of law and order, where the police are unable to deal with this problem, then we can, we can, using a presidential proclamation, ask the army to intervene along certain, and the lines of operation must be well spelt out for the army to, to come into the cities. Um, so this is really my advocacy for this week. Um, I can't say more because clearly the army has denied that this was going to happen. Um, and like I said, you know, it's up to my colleagues to, to weigh in and, and, and let's really discuss this potential problem, because if this was to be the case, then there's really no difference from us being back in a military, um, military regime um, to find soldiers on the streets of, of our major cities. Um, that was very worrisome, um, but I guess we could say cheers that um, that's not the case. Hey, who wants to kick us off? <laughs> I mean, well, can, can, yeah. can we say cheers yet? Because I don't Are think- Are we out of the woods? Yeah, have they really come out to say- They that? have, apparently. They said um, that the tweet that people are referencing was almost like photoshopped. There was something on another TV station where they said, you know, that um, the, the thing that had their logo on it was photoshopped and it wasn't from them. 
But, uh, you know, like he said, it is worrisome if it has come to that. Because I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm one of those who says, is there really smoke without fire? Mm -hmm. You know, why was the Senate debating it in the first place? Exactly. Did the Senate debate anything that comes up and happens to be, you know, like rumors? Um, unless it had some element of truth. Absolutely. And why did they let all the major newspapers carry the story? And channels, it reach, yeah, the, the you know? different newspapers. Because everywhere you yeah, turn, yeah. So, so clearly there was something there that made people think that there was cause yeah. for concern. And like you say, you know, even if you reference the fact that even the police make us uncomfortable, we are not still comfortable yeah. with police are your friend. Mm -hmm. How much more military are your friend? You know, we still have a problem with abusing power. You know, but on the other side, when I look at, you know, um, there was one story recently where they said there was a Boko Haram attack in the north. And within moments, you know, less than, you know, half the day, people returned because the military presence was there, they responded. So perhaps we could say it's been successful in the North to some extent. So we're not completely throwing it out altogether. So, so we're happy they're, they're, they're taking some sort of action. But we, like you say, maybe we need to look and say, assess how successful has it been so far in the North? And does it warrant, I don't think we, we, we believe it warrants I, okay, fine. the same kind I, of I thing in the South. Clear rules of engagement in terms of how the army should engage within the population. Okay. Um, I mean, within the northeast where we have uh, incidents of Boko Haram um, and, and terrorism, banditry, cross-border banditry, that obviously affects our territorial integrity. And I, I do believe that that is the army should step in, mm. since we, I mean, we don't have a national guard or something like that. I think the, the army should, borders. yeah, we have very porous borders. I think the army should step in because that is their constitutional duty. Where I find that this, this story you know, crosses the boundaries of what I think is normal, is, you know, this thing. And they let this thing fester for a couple of weeks. You know, uh, this thing started September. The first tweet was September 26th. Mm. And they're only now responding two days ago. Yeah. So a whole month went past. And they couldn't say they didn't hear it. Mm. The Senate debated it. The House of Reps debated it. And, you know, very many major newspapers and TV carried stations it. carried yeah. the story. It's and there was think, no pushback. I think, I think the pushback was what, you know, this... Quelled it. Give, yeah, give them a re rethink. But, um, so you honestly, think it was from them? You, you think well, that? I think maybe there was uh, there was a plan to implement something like that. Okay. You know, and this the was water. just this was just <laughs> you know. But if 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 you'd ask me really honestly, um, they were in a state of emergency in this country. Oh really? Yes. There are so many things that's happened recently with the border. Closure, for instance, mm. has opened us to a whole lot. It's, it's war on Nigeria. We've deprived countries of their uh, mainstay, you know. So, of course, there'll be a lot of things happening there. Mm. Now, there are things that they have not communicated. I believe that the problem, as with so many other policies, mm -hmm. is when you don't sell it, you don't propagate it properly. Let people you know, know what you're doing or what you intend to do mm -hmm. over time. And that's where the problem comes. Yeah. You know, they've not sold the idea that, look, mm -hmm. we need to police our borders. There are people coming in, illegal trade, yeah, illegal border foreigners. Border control is one thing, but internal yeah, but is I, another thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I think I agree with Memeka um, when he started by, on the fresh note of thankfulness that it is not to be, considering the um, the denials, at least the strong denials from the authorities. But the issue is that why was it believable? Okay. Why did the story make the rounds? Why did it look real? Okay. And why did it look like something? Then it means that it's consistent with something that has been happening before. And what are those things? You mentioned something like border closure. Mm. There are um, other incidents like the... Um, um, the shrinking civic space in the country, where hardly any week passes without news of one journalist arrested, one okay. media house shut down, and we actually hosted a database of um, what we call database of closing civic spaces, where we've tracked about 200 incidents over the last close to 200 incidents. Okay. So, with all of those things That's happening, press, like press attacks, so. yes, not just press attacks, journalists, bloggers at the state level, at the federal levels, are you know happening around the country. So that trend, you know, infused some elements of believability okay. in the story. Mm -hmm. That probably influence media institutions to report it. And I thank, and it's thank, we are thankful to them for reporting Because we don't know if it was the reporting that. Yeah, but I think that's what they call kite flying. Okay. Yeah. Where you, you want to do something, but you're not sure. 
That's you fly a kite, okay. yeah. and when you fly a kite and you push Nobody back, reacts. yeah, you when you see the push back mm. from the citizenry, then they would try to have everything. Mm. So I think that whether it was a, cli if a kite or not, or whatever it is that they intended to do, it would have led to massive violation of rights of citizens. Oh, absolutely. Um, to have crushed civil liberties, to have narrowed down the space for civic engagement. Mm. And that is not something that Nigeria should prioritize at a time like this. Mm. I, I completely agree. You know, I'm of the opinion that I think they have more important things to be doing than to be checking IDs. You know, <laughs> even with the fact that police can't even check IDs. You know, I think they really, I personally feel that it was going to happen. Oh, really? Yes, but at the end of the day, something changed. And that something might either be, are we going to get a situation, maybe the times that, you know, people had been killed due to military engagement, maybe that changed their mind. But I actually feel that along the way, they were actually focused on it being something that they would have put into place. Maybe for control, more control. But what are you controlling? We've asked for state police. You said no. Why bring army? Yeah. I, I, I think the army is the, federal the, control and, and as opposed to state control. I think the majority of Nigerians do not even have a proper means of um, government ID. Yes. themselves. You know, yeah. So how are you going to go about it? No, but you see, and, and again, that's where the abuse comes in. Because as it is, we already get harassed on the road. Yeah. And it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you say, preamble to obtaining bribes from us. So you can imagine yeah. if you have these people well, around mayhem. Christmas time. And I, 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 think, I think that, for me, I, I, I think that this was going to happen. But genuinely, the pushback, and they thought, thought about it. And wow. I really give, I, you know, I like to think that better sense prevailed, because mm -hmm. this will have led to um, um, a lot of problems. And, and, and I'm thankful to the civic space, to the media, to everybody concerned, including the army themselves, for having a, a rethink, um, or at least denying that this was going to happen. <laughs> um, so there's a time for facing off confrontational issues. After the break, Victoria lays bare another societal blight.